Those comments are plentiful on their vegan YouTube channels. Lucy G writes, Bland agriculture is earning billions of vegan money. Mike writes, Veganism equals starvation, a new way for corporate making money. Meanwhile, Great cheese comes from happy cows. Happy cows come from California. Real California cheese. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Ladies, gotta go to work. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> this video will be quite shocking, and I'm going on thin ice here, so make sure you sup and hit the bell icon beforehand. Because you might not want to do it afterwards, or you might forget, which I heard is a serious issue on YouTube. Okay, <laughs> the belief that veganism is a secret method for making money seems to be a pressing issue amongst carnists. So let's give them the benefits of the doubt. Today I want to show you how enormous Big Broccoli truly is on the facts and statistics available to the general public. You will also learn for the first time in your life probably how big and powerful the meat industry truly is. On the screen you see a glimpse of 5 points that we're going to touch upon today. Number 1. Protein Fearmongering According to this 284-page report by the United Nations and the World Health Organization, an adult needs 0.66 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. Yet we males between 20 and 59 instead consume more than 100 grams of protein daily. This is nearly twice the level of the recommendations of the WHO. Although the current level of consumption is through the roof, protein fearmongering is still a common practice of the meat industry. Fact of the matter is that the typical American has never had and never will have protein deficiency. Heck, we don't even know what symptoms protein deficiency can bring along. A beef website warns about sarcopenia, a muscle shrinkage disease usually affecting the elderly if we don't consume excess protein. Yet the research is lacking and inconclusive. A 2001 study states that decreased physical activity with aging appears to be the key factor involved in producing sarcopenia. Another study concludes that protein deficiency is no problemo if you consume enough calories. The fear of protein deficiency is actually a tool the industry created to suit its agenda. Number 2. Industry power in numbers. It takes about 7 million US dollars in campaign fees to get elected as the President of the United States today. The campaigning cost since the 1960s has increased tenfold, and this is inflation adjusted. As the fees increased, so did the costs of lobbying. The dollar amount organizations need to pay to lobby Congress increased 35-fold since 1983, which means only companies that truly make the big bucks manage to access those in power nowadays. So let's make a short comparison of the dollar worth of meats and dairy versus meat and dairy alternative sector with a classic QG pie chart. The egg production is valued at 6.5 billion US dollars today. In 2017, dairy production in the US alone was valued at 37 billion dollars. The meat and poultry industry, according to this 2016 report by the Meat Institute, was responsible for 1 trillion dollars, which is 5% of the total GDP. It is also responsible indirectly and directly for 5.4 million jobs. It's safe to assume that the US meat industry is worth at least a trillion dollars. But, but, what about plant-based alternatives? Glad you asked. The meat substitute markets is valued at $4 billion in 2017. The plant-based beverages are worth $11 billion. And both dollar values of the plant-based meats and beverages are global measures, not in the US. The US value is likely much, much lower. But if the meat and dairy industry is so powerful, how does lobbying look like? Take Gregory Miller. He's the chief science officer at the National Dairy Council, executive vice president of research, regulatory and scientific affairs for Dairy Management Inc. and global dairy sector lead for nutritional security 
for Global Dairy Platform. Dr. Miller is also a member of the editorial board for the Journal of the American College of Nutrition, the Journal of Nutritional Biochemistry, Current Nutrition and Food Science, Journal of Nutrigenetics, Nutrigenomics and the Open Nutrition Journal and if this is not enough, also of the Major Medicine Canada. The power of industry in number also explains the following fact. Dairy spends more on advertising in one week than the blueberry, mango, watermelon and mushroom industry spend together in a year. Number 3. The plant industry is the meat industry. But why is there no corn or soybeans in the previous pie chart QG, you might ask? The reason is that corns and soybeans are the meat industry to some degree. While the US is the biggest corn producer in the world, only a tenth of its 13 billion bushels per year is used for human consumption. Approximately a third is used for animal feed and another third is used for alcohol. 90% of the genetically engineered seeds from Monsanto are actually sold in the US and supply most of the animal feed of farm animals. It's ironic how we talk about plant agriculture companies pushing the vegan agenda, yet we forget that corn and grains are the fundament of the meat industry. If the meat industry was a real estate company, the plant industries are the ones providing the construction materials. Some statistics show that 98% of all soybeans are going to the meat industry. People worry about the consumption of soybeans and call vegan soy boys, yet forget that 98% of the soybeans are used to feed animals. So who is the real soy boy now? <laughs> the US government spends more than $20 billion a year on farm subsidies. Yet the truth is that at least a third of those payouts are indirect subsidies for the animal industry. Number 4. The Art of Subsidies Imagine a bakery that sells every cake for a dollar less than it costs to make. If a friend of you would present such business plan to you, you, you would probably call him foolish or stupid. But instead of going out of business, imagine the business of your friend flourishes and expands, adding more ovens and increasing output for years. Impossible, right? Not for America's producers of meat, fish, eggs and dairy. Pig farmers spend an average of $8 more raising each pig than the animal is worth when sold. Government subsidies make this business model profitable. Each year, American taxpayers are estimated to pay out 38 billion US dollars to subsidize the animal industry. This is nearly half of what unemployment costs us on a yearly basis. The truth is that meat production is so inefficient that it could never be offered at the price it gets found in the supermarkets right now. I think we give too much weight to factors like taste, dietary beliefs and tradition when it comes to our food choices. But the reality is that price probably plays a bigger factor than we might think. I mean, who would buy bacon on a regular basis if the price quadrupled? Number 5. The True Dangers of Meat Eating In 2009, 12,000 Americans died from the swine flu. It was an international catastrophe. Yet the USDA had different concerns. In April of that same year, Secretary Tom Vilsack stated, We want to reinforce the fact that we're doing everything we possibly can to make sure that our hog industry is sound and safe. This really isn't swine flu, it's H1N1 virus. Ultimately, the claims of Vilsack turned out to be false. There were pigs involved in the formation of the disease. 13 scientists concluded in the 2009 issue of Nature that the influenza jumped from swine to human a couple months before the outbreak. In reality land, a land far away from industry interests, the swine flu turned out to be just one of many diseases that start in animals. Other diseases include bird flu, cholera, dengue fever, Ebola, HIV and even freaking herpes. Imagine how easy life would be if there wouldn't be freaking herpes. <laughs> we also shouldn't forget the increasing threat of creating antibiotic resistant bacteria due to our excess use of bacterial killers in livestock. So why have we, the general population, never heard of this connection between the animal industry and disease? 
Because of the gargantuan power of the meat industry, it's illegal to badmouth animal foods publicly in 13 states. This is called food disparagement. Yes, in some states this video is considered illegal. I feel like such a bad boy now. <laughs> and as Oprah Winfrey learned firsthand, is that the big companies do not hesitate to sue the people that are unkind to their products. Conclusion: The tobacco industry is considered to be a scapegoat, the root of all evil for the US population. But is that truly justified? Over five decades, the tobacco industry were responsible for 400 billion in healthcare costs. These were costs that they ended up paying. Yet the animal industry creates more than 600 billion in healthcare costs every two years and pays none of them. The animal industry gets subsidized, but cigarettes are even getting taxed by the government. I think it's time to challenge our long-held assumptions now. Challenging assumptions is not a bad thing. I mean, we once thought the earth was flat and bloodletting was a good medical practice. We also thought that lead in wine was just fine. And in 1929, one thought we should add cocaine to Coca-Cola. Yes, seriously. The current status quo is neither morally nor medically acceptable. Two thirds of Americans are overweight. One third of Americans are obese. This wasn't always the case. Just 50 years ago, one in eight Americans was obese. While this trend in obesity can also be linked to the consumption of sugary foods and less physical activity, it is time to realize that consuming meat is outdated due to a variety of moral, ecological and even economic reasons. The mission of this YouTube channel is to put veganism across the goal line. If you want to help us achieve that, like and subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Let's make food production great again.